Hello and welcome once again to The Old Man Speaks. I'm Joshua. I come to you three times a week and talk for five minutes. When my kids were young, they were not interested in the music I was playing or really the music I was listening to either. I would come into the room and start playing my guitar and they would complain, could you go someplace else? You're bothering us. And I would say, hey, who's paying the bills here? But I was a pushover and I used to go in the other room or in another part of the house where I could play my guitar for a few minutes now and then. But that's not all. We had the finest musicians in the world playing in our little house. I kid you not. In the late 1980s through the 1990s, when my kids were very young, we had house concerts, and we were one of the first people in the area to do such a thing. As were some of the house concerts that came along after us, concentrated mostly on singer-songwriters, we had quite a variety, largely of instrumental music. Robin Bullock would come and play in our house on a regular basis. We had people like Mike Mumford and John Glick, who are the finest of bluegrass players, and they would come once a year, and they would play for hours just improvising on fiddle tunes. We had people like Bill Staines, my favorite songwriter in life, come to our house and play. Ron McFarlane, the famous lute player, and there were so many others. But my kids weren't really very interested in all of this. They were interested in the food. They were interested in light sticks. They would go outside and wave the light sticks so that people would know where to go, and that was great fun for them. My oldest son had an interest in music, but not this kind of music. He liked it loud and he liked it with great spectacle. The bigger the sound system, the better. You get the picture. Well, when I went to folk festivals, which I always tried to do, I listened to the bands before I went, so I would know where to go. I still do that. And I was listening in a common area in the house to a group called Fluke. And my son Judah hears this, and he says, what is that? And I said, that's a group called Fluke, and the lead instrument is an Irish tin whistle. Well, he started listening, and he says, can I have a tin whistle? I said, sure, we'll get you a tin whistle. And, of course, his sister had to have one as well. And they got in their devious little minds the idea that the next starter down would be the percussionist, and she would play the Bauron, the Irish frame drum. So we went down a house of musical traditions, and we found one. And from there, they started learning tunes. Then they needed a teacher. I called my buddy Myron Bretholtz, who knows so much about Irish music, and I knew he'd be able to find us a teacher, and he did. And Joseph McCusker, great teacher for the kids, taught them whistle and bow on. And then they started going down to sessions. And within a year's time, with the help of Donna Long and the people down at J. Patrick's, they were playing pretty well. A few years later, they were playing very well. Many teenagers at that point in history were hanging out at the mall and less desirable places, not really doing very much. My kids were all homeschooled, so they could afford to keep me out very late at night at the pub and there they would play tunes with the finest people I have ever met, people who had a wonderful influence on them and were there for them in so many ways. And Fluke? We saw them several times. Once was at the Millennium Stage. I introduced myself to Sarah, and they dedicated a set of tunes to my kids who were there in the audience. The next time we saw them was in Harrisburg, and they made sure that we came backstage so that my kids could have some tunes with Brian Finnegan. These are just great people. They really changed our life forever. 
there's so much more to say, but I'm over five minutes already, so I may revisit this topic later. See you next time. Have a great weekend.